But today we're going to do something different. We had a YouTuber actually respond to one of our videos, and we really appreciate him. His name is Philip Arm. He uh, wrote us, asked us. We said, sure. Great. Go for it. Uh, he sent us the link. We watched it, and I wasn't initially. Lacey hasn't seen this yet, just FYI. Uh, but I watched it, and initially I was like, oh, I'm not going to bother responding. But then it got, within a couple of minutes, it got kind of wild. And so I thought, okay, I'll watch the rest of it. And so I watched the rest of it. And he kind of inadvertently brings up a lot of stuff that lately, Lacey and I have complained about for months. We just never have enough time because we only have enough time for our schedules to do one 90 minute show a week. That's all we got because they take a lot of prep time too. It's not like, you know, it takes at least five to 10 hours of research depending on the episode, right? So for us, it's kind of like, wow. And so he brought up a lot of stuff that we, we have all this extra research we never get in because we're trying to keep it tight. But he brought up this stuff, so I thought, well, we'll just go over his video today because he inadvertently steps into a bunch of this stuff. But right. uh, this is Phil talking about, uh, so we were, our, our end thought process was, look, um, the issue is people aren't getting paid enough, right? So as an individual, all you can really do is you can go out and vote, you can unionize, you can, you can be more proactive, you can push for for things like raising the minimum wage, stuff like that. We were just sort of wrapping up the thought process. And that's all we were doing here. When we're addressing what we feel the original TikToker was sort of trying to- it Was what he was saying. Which, which it was more large, broad, systemic types of issues. That people aren't getting and paid so enough. We were, right, we were kind of looping back to those. Yeah, that's all it was. But we were still stuck on, we were talking about averages. Right, we were talking about the big picture. They were talking about like it was a specific budget, and that's why we're wrapping up this way. But see, Phil's still stuck on it's a, it's one guy we're talking about, and it's not. And their jobs and trying to unionize, yeah, that's how you do it. No, what? Where did that come from? Well, okay, here's my opinion on the unionization stuff. If you don't like working for somebody, don't work for them. You're not a slave. You're not being forced to work that job. I worked a job up in Alaska. Um, we'll skip his anecdote, but here's the thing. If you have a lot of situations, you have a lot of debt, you have two kids or something like that, right? Your spouse is sick and you're the only one working. You can't really afford to quit your job. Right? Right. Well, and it, you know what? It's also not as simple as just go and get a different job because I belong to a teacher's union, one of the largest unions in the country, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, to say, if you don't like the, those job conditions, just go get a different job. Well, I also work for one of the largest school districts in the country. So telling me just to go get another job, you're telling me I either can't work in the public school system mm -hmm. or I'm supposed to move. Right. Well, then, you know, but then here he's going to, so that's not always practical. No, it's not, but he's going to double down a little bit here. They just put her in charge. But after that happened, I was like, I'm done. And I literally quit. Um, no two week notice or anything. I quit, hopped in my car and drove. They Most people can't do that though. Tax. Most people can't do that's that. That's a call. pretty entitled suggestion. No, I know. But we were talking about a single guy with no kids, no responsibilities. I mean, uh, it's pretty. That, I, I, a lot of a lot of single people without children I don't get... have the luxury to even be able to just like. Well, they don't have the money. No two week notice. They, you know, don't have. And I'm all about build that emergency fund so that you could do that. But a lot of people are just not in that situation, even though single. No. All right, let's wrap up. Like, oh, we, we want you back, Phil, come on. But no, I don't tolerate abuse, uh, whether that be emotionally or physically. It was, uh, it was only verbal here. abuse that I was suffering at that job. Uh, but I wouldn't tolerate it, you know? And I did give, and I did give them a, a chance and losers and... Oh, there it was. Uh, ...unionized, because lo losers... Uh, ...unionized, because losers want to find a bunch of other losers and basically uh, talk to their employer and be like, we will work for you. Dude, this is the guy who gave you a job. Don't work for them, <laughs> all right? Don't work. Losers unionize. Well, oh, I, really, uh, I, I really 
hope a lot of people from my union just saw that. And once again, but once again, this is this is what like the seventh or eighth time in this video he's been just flat wrong. So losers unionize. Well, union workers get higher pay if they can join the union. And this is Reuters saying this, mm -hmm. right? And so they talked about this, uh, two decades of wage for retail workers found that pay advantage union workers have enjoyed over non-union employees in that sector is increasing. The weekly pay differentiation between a union and non-union worker widened from $20 in 2013 to more than 50 in 2019. Plus union workers are more likely to have healthcare benefits. Right. The other